Okay, we are going to, we're done with that packet for now. We are going to go back to our packet from last week, which was called Learn HTML and CSS, an absolute beginner's guide, and that is the one that we were starting on the bubble under dive site. So last week we started and we worked through the first about eight pages of that handout, and we saved Somewhere on our computer here at school, we have a folder called Bubble Under, and inside of it we have an index file and we have a picture um, of the divers that is stored within that same folder. So a couple of things, and then we're going to move on in this packet. Um, some naming rules. Don't put spaces in between words when you say files. I've mentioned this to you, you either run it all together, you use underscores, you use hyphens, anything but all just spaces. And I'll show you quickly why that is. I'll go back to Notepad and I'll open something that we already have here. Um, just open recent. If this file I had named file save as um, Brenda's practice file.html and I had spaces between all the words like you see here. When we actually run this in a browser, I want you to look at the file name up here at the top. Every time you put a space in, it can't have that space, so it puts in percentage 20 wherever I had a space. So Brenda's percentage 20, practice percentage 20, File. That's ridiculous, right? You don't want all those spaces that have to be filled in with code. So that's why when we do naming conventions, we have to be very aware of what we're doing. Wildflower foods. All right, where did you go? All right, we have to be very careful with our naming conventions. All right, let's improve our scuba diving site. Some of this we've already done. So last week we already made a folder. We already moved our HTML file into that and the image as well. All right, we're going to start by creating a brand new notepad file, and we're going to name it div.html. And we're going to look at some code. So let's go back to Notepad. You can close out everything and have a brand new empty file going. And what we have to do is remember we have to start with that basic structure. We can't just start typing paragraphs and whatever. So we need to go with our original template. Or if you want to, let's do a file and then open that last file we did, the one that we were calling um, the practice file. Let's go back in that and clean it up so that it's just a basic template. And how we would do that, this is the one we just did, where we have the word Wildflower Cafe in the title. Let's just take that out and write title here. The character set is always going to be included, but whether or not we have meta tags beyond that is not necessary. So I'm just going to delete all that out. So a very simple head is going to contain a title, and the character set of UTF-8. The body, I'm going to wipe out everything we've done so far. And so now we just have opening body tags with nothing in it and a closing HTML tag. So this is your basic, simple template. And if for any reason you've overwritten this and you want to start with another, you want to have this ready to pull up whenever we do practices, let's do a file, save as, and wherever you want to save this, on your desktop or on your jump drive or on your um, H drive, whatever you want to do, um, I'm going to just give it a title of clean template, all run together as one word, .html. So this is our starting point of anything we're going to do. At the top of... If you were to number your pages in this bubble under handbook, it would be paragraph 9, but, or I'm sorry, page 9, but probably don't have that. So the page prior is a left-facing page, 
It has the bubble under diver's picture at the top, and I'm on the very next page after adding structure. So at the top of that page, it says, um, when you place content inside a div, it has no effect. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. So let's start with the code we see at the top of this page and put it inside our body tag. So type in two paragraphs. We don't need to type in all four. That's kind of overkill. So this is a paragraph. Close it out. And then this is another paragraph. Close that one out. Then what they have in that text box at the top is a div. And we're going to talk about the, what that actually is. So type in div. This is a div. End div. And then you put in the code for backslash div to end it. And then we'll do another one. Oops. This is another div. And for the sake of seeing, um, try to push that up to the top of the screen. For the sake of seeing what more than one line looks like at a time, I'm just going to literally highlight and copy these two paragraphs and paste them again, just so I have more on this page. And then I'm going to do the same with the two sentences I wrote about divs. I'm going to copy them and paste them right below. So now I have four paragraphs, and four divs. After you've done that, save. Um, well, let's save it as, because clean template is not anymore. Let's do a file, save as. Okay. And we're going to call this, like they said in our slideshow, div. So div, or I'll say div example, maybe a little bit easier to understand, dot HTML. Now if we run this page in Chrome, we're going to see a couple of differences. So by default, every time you have a paragraph tag, start and end, it automatically puts some breathing room above and below it. So paragraphs are usually more than one line. So if this were six lines, at the end of the paragraph, there'd be a little bit of breathing room before the next paragraph started. Notice with divs, there's none of that. They're stacked on top of each other. They didn't automatically add any breathing room whatsoever. Let me shrink this down over here. Okay, so paragraphs add this breathing room. Divs do not. So the purpose of a div, why we even have this code, is that they divide up a web page into distinct sections. Divide it up, div, D-I-V, that's where that comes from. Um, it's basic framework. It has nothing to do with styling. It's just about organization. So um, let's go back to our code and go to the first div that we did and take out that sentence in there. And inside this first div, we're going to put um, something. We're going to put two paragraphs inside here. So we're going to do P. I'm at the bottom of this page now. Um, this is a paragraph inside a div, and paragraph, and then paragraph. This is a second paragraph inside a div and P. I'm going to tab those over so visually it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So inside this div, we have two paragraphs. Here's how I want to explain divs to you because they're really quite confusing at first, but they aren't. I want you to think of cleaning up a toy room for a kid. And you go to Walmart and you buy this huge plastic bin. 
And this huge plastic bin is called toys. You put a label on the front of it that says toys. You could chuck every toy inside that plastic bin, right? Or you could buy smaller plastic bins and put all the trucks in one, all of the stuffed animals in another, and all of the Legos in another, and you could label those clear plastic bins and put them all inside the toy bin. It's organization. Yes. Oh, I'll take a break then. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of thinking. A lot. Wow. So, div is just the generic name of a thing that divides up your web page. It doesn't have a name yet, but we could call this a div of toys, and then inside it we could have a div of Legos and a div of trucks and a div of dollars. Okay, it's like folders or clear, I think that it's clear plastic bins that we put stuff in and we keep it organized. So later on, instead of it just being generic, we're going to put more information right here. After that, we're going to put a space and then we're going to start saying, what kind of a div is this? The identification of this ID equals toys. So then we know that this div is all about toys. How we're going to use it in web page layout is you guys can picture a web page. At the top of it is usually the logo and the name of the company and some basic stuff, right? That's usually called a header. So the first div that we might have or container is the header. Here's what goes in the header. Somewhere on the page we tend to have the navigation. Sometimes it's on the left, sometimes it's right underneath that first um, header. The next div or clear plastic box that we're going to have, we're going to put a label on it and call it navigation. Everything that goes inside there is part of our navigation. Then we're going to have a div that's called contents. Everything like on our page, all the information and pictures. That's the plastic box that all that goes into. And then all web pages pretty much have a footer at the bottom, right? They have some information at the bottom that has how to reach them, their address, maybe their social media links. And we put a plastic bin and we throw all the footer stuff inside there. Who cares? Why are we doing this? The reason we're putting them in plastic bins is because then later, if we want to rearrange our website, instead of rebuilding it top to bottom, left to right code, we can say, I want the footer to be the first thing on my page. And you can say, the div that is the footer goes here. The div that used to be called header, I want down here now. You can tell things where to go, or I want my navigation to be on the left now. All you have to do is tell that div, that plastic box, where to go, and everything inside it follows those rules. Okay, so it's about rearranging and rebuilding your website, making it work better for your end user. So that's what divs are. A little out there, but that's what they are. All right. Let's save this example. We now made a div. We didn't give it a name yet. We didn't put a plastic or a... We didn't put a label on it yet. It's just a clear bin of nothingness with two paragraphs inside it. Let's save that file and just take a peek at what our code is looking like now. So at the top, we have the four paragraphs. That's these. Then we have a div starting, and inside of it are two paragraphs. And because these are paragraphs, they do put that space above and below. The fact that they're in a div, we can't see. It doesn't show up. It doesn't look any different. But later on, if we named this div um, Legos, that's the name we assign to it, and then we say anything that has a code name of Legos, I want to be red and bold type, that would apply it to everything inside this plastic bin, this div, if it has the code name Legos, so that when we looked at this on our screen, all of a sudden, these two paragraphs would be red because they're inside the Lego div, and that was a rule we applied to the Lego div, if that makes sense. All right, we'll get to that in a while, but not immediately. All right, so let's look at um, bubble under. Let's go back to Notepad and do a file open and then navigate to wherever your bubble under folder is. Mine's on my desktop. Yours, I think, is maybe on your H drive or your cloud or maybe a jump. Wherever your bubble under folder is from last week, let's open it. And the two things that are inside there are 
the index, which is the starting page. It has to be named that. And again, this is a .html file, and because Chrome is my default viewer, that's why I see the little Chrome icon. And then we have the JPEG, which is Diver Circle Image. Let's open the index page in Notepad. So from Notepad, I'm telling it to open. This is everything we wrote last week. So we had a head with a title. The one thing that this is missing that we've learned about today is that UTF coding. So why don't we add that to it right away before we go any further. So inside your head, either before or after the title, it doesn't matter. Let's add that meta line that says character set C-H-A-R-S-E-T equals, and then in quotations, U-T-F hyphen eight, end quote, closing caret, standalone tag, that's all we need. Meta character set equals UTF-8. And then let's save this because now this is perfect. So inside the body, we had a heading 1 that said bubble under. We had a paragraph. We had a heading 2. And then we had an image. We called for an image, and we told it where to go find it, what the name of it was, and how big it should be. Then we had a paragraph, and about us, another paragraph, heading 3 another paragraph, and it actually had a working email link. So let's look at this in Chrome. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to make this a wider thing. If this were an actual website and it had a little bit more visual appearance to it, Bubble Under and a Diving Club for the Southwest UK, that's stuff that would be in the header. Bubble under is the title or the name of it. And then, so it's the branding section. There's the name of the business and there's their tagline. Those two things would be included in a div called the header. And then if we said later on, everything that's in the header should have a light blue background and white type, those two rules would apply to anything inside the header div, which would be these two lines after we add that code. Then we have all of this, and this is basically the body or the content of the page. This would all be inside a div called body content. And then if we said a rule like everything in the body content should be black 12 point aerial type on a white background, it would follow those rules. Right now this is not aerial, this is like Times New Roman, which is the default, but that would apply the rule to anything and everything inside the div called body content. And then at the end, if we had a footer that had our copyright information, we would put that inside a div called footer. And if we said the footers should have a black background and the type should be white, then that would be applied to everything inside the footer. So that is basically what divs are in a nutshell. And we are going to stop here and take a break. And I actually 